Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this edition of the 700 Club. There's a hot spot in the Middle East I want to talk to you about. A Turkish invasion and a resurgence of ISIS. That could be the future for people in northeastern Syria. The Trump administration has convinced Turkey not to invade the territory. But as Chris Mitchell reports, the situation could lead to bigger problems for an American ally and thousands of Christians who live in that region. This is the safe zone to be established on the border between Turkey and northeast Syria. According to the agreement, the U.S. and Turkey will rapidly address Turkey's security concerns. President Erdogan calls the area of northeast Syria a terror swamp. Establish a joint operations center to manage the safe zone although it's unclear who will oversee this operation, and rename the safe zone a peace corridor. Negotiations took place under the shadow of invasion threats by Turkey's President Erdogan into this region. Erdogan's threats center on a new democracy called SANS, or the self-administration of Northeast Syria. For years, the group served as chief ally of the U.S. against ISIS. What we have in the northeast of Syria is a political system that has provided peace for this region in Syria and that has provided a vision for the region. Syrian leaders like Bassam Itzak worry this agreement threatens their new democracy. For example, the part that says every effort shall be made so that displaced Syrians can return to their country. He fears they will include Islamist groups who have been Erdogan's allies. Basically, it's gangs who are mostly were either members of ISIS or members of Nusra. So it's basically defeating ISIS in one place and then bringing them under a rebrand name. It will be a total surrender by the U.S. to the pressure of Turkey and to the pressure of the ruling party of Turkey, which is an Islamist extremist party. Syrian Christian groups have reached out to U.S. leaders to intervene on their behalf with President Trump. Many believe 100 years after the Armenian genocide, the 100,000 Christians in the region are once again at risk. From the perspective of the Christians who live in northeast Syria, the old bully is following them into where they came to safety under the pretext of a safe zone. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Ladies and gentlemen, I have said before, and I'll say it again, the answer, the answer is to have a Trump, Trump manifesto that declares it is the intention of the United States of America to recognize a homeland for the Kurds. And there should be an independent Kurdistan that would fill the void that's there right now. It would be part of northern Iraq. It would be part of uh, northern Syria. And it would encompass the 36 million Kurds in that area. And then, in turn, the United States could uh, sell them arms or give them arms and warn anybody else against coming in against them. That would be the, the buffer. It would take care of Iran on the south, and it would take care of Turkey on the north, and it would also take care of the Russians. It is the ideal solution, and it's something to be prayed for. And these, this poor little enclave of Christians is going to be wiped out by Turkey. They will be destroyed unless we move actively to get something done about it. Well, CBN's Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell is joining us now from Jerusalem. And uh, Chris, well, what is Erdogan's strategy uh, and what's the Trump administration trying to accomplish? Well, before I get to that, Pat, I would say what you're saying about a, a declaration, uh, you know, on behalf of a Kurdish homeland. I asked a Middle East expert just the other day about that. He saw there was a brilliant idea. And as you say, they would be a buffer against Iran from the east, from Turkey expanding the Assad regime as well as Russia. And they would be a natural U.S. ally. In terms of Erdogan's strategy right now, I think he wants to have a demographic invasion. And uh, if you look at the, the criteria of this agreement, uh, they talk about refugees coming in. Well, there's 3.6 million refugees in Turkey right now, and the people in northeast Syria want to make sure 
all of those 3.6 million uh, uh, refugees come in, uh, they believe that he wants to make uh, Turkey, uh, make Northeast Syria a pro-Turkey uh, area, and this is one step towards that goal. Well, what is he going to do to the Christians? Does it look like another genocide? Well, that's, that's the concern for many of the Christians in Pat, and here's why. They have two, two history lessons they have to look back to. March 2018, Turkish forces allied with Islamic jihadist forces came into the, uh, the, the city of Afrin. This is in eastern Turkey. Uh, they displaced thousands of people. They burned churches. They hunted down Christians. And so these are the same kind of jihadi forces that they are concerned Erdogan is trying to bring into uh, northeast Syria. So so that's their short-term memory. Long-term memory is they have many of the people in northeast Syria, and when I was there, Pat, not too long ago, I heard this over and over again. These are the ancestors of the people who fled the Armenian Genocide in 1915. So their grandparents had to flee. They came to northeast Syria for safety and refuge, and now they are concerned that the bully, as, uh, as Bassam Itzhak said in our story, is going to pursue them once more and threaten a genocide against the Christians in northeast Syria. There's about 100,000 thousands of them. Well, when you were there, what, what struck you? What, what stood out in your mind as you met with those people? Well, Pat, it was an amazing story, and I think it's one of the most underreported stories in the whole of Middle, Middle East. You actually found a democracy. To me, it was a revelation of how, how well formed this democracy was. They have a representative form of government. They mandate in the charter that they started in 2014 that 40% of the representatives uh, have to be women. They have religious freedom. They not only allow people to worship and practice their religion, they allow people to change their religion. Now, in the middle of the Islamic world, that is unprecedented. So people can actually get out of Islam freely, and that's unprecedented in this part of the world. And another thing, Pat, that really struck me is that many people there, and Bassam Itzek we saw in our story, really believe that what's happening in northeast Syria is prophetic. If you look at Isaiah chapter 19, it talks about a holy highway between Assyria, Israel, and Egypt, and they believe this democracy, this freedom that's happening there in northeast Syria is the precursor to fulfillment of what Isaiah wrote 2,500 years ago. Years ago. Well, may it happen. Well, there's a new Pentagon report that says ISIS is reforming in Syria. Uh, have you got any word on that? Well, you know that uh, the physical caliphate of ISIS has been defeated just a few months ago. Uh, that happened in south, uh, southwestern, uh, southeastern Syria. But the ideology has not stopped. And you have cell groups, sleeper cells in northeast Syria right now that are a, a part of ISIS, and you have those in other parts of Syria as well. So the ideology really hasn't gone away, the, uh, the physical caliphate. And that's why many people say in northeast Syria, we need to make sure that this democracy holds that they can be the ones, like they have since 2015, to ally themselves with the United States and stamp out ISIS for good. Uh, Trump wants to pull troops out. You can't blame him for wanting to do that. But what happens if we pull out prematurely? Well, if we pulled out prematurely, I think what would happen would be the opposite of what you said at the very beginning. Uh, Northeast Syria is a buffer against Iran. It prevents Iran from having a land bridge all the way to the Mediterranean. It prevents the expansion of Erdogan, who has this brand of Muslim Brotherhood Islam. It prevents the Assad regime and Russia from taking over that part of the region. So if a U.S. presence comes out of there, you really could have a catastrophe. You could have much greater chaos in the Middle East. And I know Americans may ask, why should we care about this part of the region, part of the Middle East, this part of the world? That's why. It really prevents many of the bad actors in this region from expanding. It really is a natural ally. It really does, uh, you know, for, for U.S. interests, this is a key ally. And what the uh, Syrian leaders are telling me is that they really want an ironclad guarantee by the United States that they will stand with him during this crisis. Chris, thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about another major war. I mean, if you think that this thing goes into chaos, that we won't be involved, we'll have to send troops, but massive forces over there to clean it up, and it'll be bloody and it'll be nasty. Right now, we can take care of it, but if we pull out and leave a vacuum, you know what it says, nature abhors a vacuum. Well, it'll be a vacuum, and we cannot allow that to happen. Well, in other news, Iran is jamming GPS systems in the Persian Gulf 
to trick ships and planes into entering their territory. Alarming. John Jessup has more. Thanks, Pat. Wednesday, the U.S. issued a warning to commercial ships in the Persian Gulf to be wary of GPS interference. In at least two incidents, including Iran's recent seizure of a British flag vessel, ships reported interference with their GPS systems. One U.S. defense official told CNN Iran has put G GPS jamming equipment on an island near the Strait of Hormuz to mislead ships and planes into mistakenly entering Iranian airspace or waters so they can be shot down or seized. Other ships have reported fake messages from unknown sources claiming to be the United States or coalition vessels. President Trump is inviting Internet and technology companies to the White House Friday for a roundtable discussion on violent extremism. The announcement comes as pressure mounts on the president and Congress to do more to combat mass shootings. Wednesday, the president and first lady traveled to Dayton, Ohio and El Paso, Texas to comfort those communities in the aftermath of Saturday's shootings. At Dayton's Miami Hospital, they thanked first responders, staff members and consoled victims. Protesters turned out in both cities. More than 200 city mayors are calling on Congress to return from summer vacation to address gun violence. President Trump has indicated support for a bipartisan bill on so-called red flag laws designed to keep guns out of the hands of mentally ill people. Well, the two attacks have the country on edge. Mayhem in New York's Times Square Tuesday night as people stampeded through the streets in a panic after mistakenly think they heard, thinking they heard gunshots. Police said a motorcycle backfired. And yesterday, workers at the USA Today building in McLean, Virginia, were evacuated after police received reports of a possible active shooter there. Heavily armed SWAT teams cleared the area, but Pat, fortunately, no gunman was found. You know, ladies and gentlemen, we can't live in fear. That, that stampede in Times Square is unbelievable. One motorcycle backfires and suddenly people think there's a gunman, but why do you run? What are you running from if you don't know where they are? I mean, you know, the best thing to do is just hide. If you're going to, you think there's a gunman going, either get your own gun and take that gentleman out or else get under a table or something, but don't go running around because you're then vulnerable. But to see stampeding of thousands of people, thousands because of one motorcycle backfire, we don't want to live in a country where this goes on. We've got to do something to fix this problem. And uh, the president, I think, is, is doing the right thing to try to get to the sources of all this fear and all this hatred that is being built up in our society. Is it through social media? Is it because of uh, the Internet? Is it because of, of video games? Is it because of mental illness? Or is it a combination of all these things? Whatever it is, uh, we've got to fix it.